So here we have a quite tricky IGCSE question with a very difficult looking diagram based on the description up here. When we come to the three parts to this question though, fairly straightforward. It just says A, write down the size of angle MLJ, so MLJ, that's this angle up here. B, write down the size of angle JLK, so JLK. And then C, write down the size, uh, sorry, work out. So that's an important difference. Work out the size of angle KPL. So KPL, this kind of central angle here. Okay, well, how did students get on? Let's have a look at the examiner's remarks. And the examiners say most students answered part A correctly. However, some incorrectly assumed that P was the centre of the circle, which I'm afraid isn't given in the description or in the diagram. Consequently, these students deduced that MK was the diameter of the circle. So this line from here to here was a diameter, which it isn't. And that angle MLK was therefore 90 degrees, okay, leading to an angle JKL equal to 69 degrees. And all of that is wrong. So part C proved even more challenging. Here, similar assumptions were made, often leading to zero marks being scored. All right, well, let's see if we can work through the answers to each of these parts and not make the same sorts of mistake. So first of all, it says write down the size of angle MLJ. So we want to tell the examiner what we're doing. So we're going to write this out carefully. So we're trying to find the size of angle MLJ. And it says we should be able to write it down. And when it says write it down, it, it means that there's no calculating, there's no working out that needs to be done. So we should be able to just look at the diagram and work out what the angle is, knowing uh, the circle theorems that we do. Well, most people got this right, and that's because I guess they recognised the bow theorem, so-called. So we've got this kind of bow tie arrangement here. And that's more correctly termed that the it's when angles sharing the same arc are congruent. So this angle here is congruent with this angle here. So this angle is 21 degrees, the same as this angle. So we don't need to work anything out. We just need to write down A, angle MLJ equals 21 degrees. We don't need to get, give the explanation even, so there's nothing more to do. We should get the marks just for writing down 21 degrees. OK, so most students got that right, but they stumbled over part B. Let's have a look at part B. So in part B, it says write down the size of angle JLK. So we've got angle JLK. And so JLK is this angle here. Now again it says write down the angle so we should be able to just look at that and see one of those patterns that we're familiar with from the circle theorems and then we should without any working out be able to write the angle down. Well hopefully you can see if you cover up the left hand side of the diagram if you cover this up and just look at this triangle here LKJ um, hopefully you can see that um, we have a, a triangle in a circle uh, with a tangent. And that should flag up the idea of the alternate segment theorem. So we've got an angle in this small segment here made by this chord going across here. The alternate segment is in here. The angle in that alternate segment, if we just focus on this triangle here, is this one here. So this angle here must be congruent with this angle here. And we know that because of the alternate segment theorem. So we can now write down that this angle is 62 degrees. And simply write it down without needing to write down the reason, the theorem that we're referring to. OK, so not too bad so far. Let's move on to part C. 
Now this is something that people really did find challenging and this is because we've now got to work out the size of angle KPL. It's not a case of just writing it down. All right, so first of all, let's identify where KPL is. So we've got KPL, it's going to be this angle here. But we need to remember that P is not the center of the circle. So we can't use several of the theorems that we're used to using. We have to just work with what we've got. We've got an angle here. We need to get this angle here. We haven't got this angle here. So it may be that that's what we're looking at. OK, well, let's see what, how, we, how we get on. First of all, um, we might notice that with this triangle on the left hand side, we've already got two angles. And so probably the easiest win and a good way of getting at this problem is to complete the triangle here. So the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So if we want to find this angle here, all the way around there, so angle GJL, so angle GJL, then we simply take these two angles from 180 degrees, leaving just this angle here. So we've got 180 degrees minus 21 degrees plus 78. OK, so that's 180 minus 99 degrees. And so that's 181 minus 100. just to make the calculation easier. So 181 minus 100 leaves us with 81 degrees. Just to make sure we haven't made a mistake with our arithmetic, I'm just going to add that back. So 81 plus 99, well 80 plus 90 uh, is 170, and the 1 plus the 9 is 10, so 170 plus 10 gives me my 180. So I know that this it's correct that I haven't made a mistake so far. So we know that GJL is 81 degrees. So I can write that in here. This whole angle here is 81 degrees. Now, how does that help? Well, if we again look at this triangle that we looked at earlier, which is we can then use the um, alternate segment theorem again, we've now got this angle here, which must be congruent with the angle in the alternate segment, which must be this angle here. Okay, so that too must be 81 degrees. So we can say that angle LKJ equals 81 degrees. That's the alternate segment theorem. We don't need to write it down, but I will just Note it. And now we should have this smaller angle in here because we can take away the 21. So we can say that PKL, so, so therefore angle PKL is 81, subtract this 21 degrees. So that's the same as 80 minus 20, which gives us 60 degrees. OK, add it back. 60 plus 21 gives us 81. Again, that was a simple check. I'm not going to give it a tick, but we've got 81 minus 21 equals 60. So I can be sure that I'm OK so far. PKL is 60 degrees. So I'm going to just write that in here. And now we can get at LPK. Or what did they call it? KPL. OK, so we've now got angle KPL as the third angle in this triangle. So we know that the angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. So we can say KPL equals 180 degrees minus these two angles added together. So we've got 62 degrees plus our 60 degrees now, giving us 180 minus, just add this together, 102 
22 degrees and then 180 minus 122 same as 80 minus 22 is 58 degrees and there's our answer but again just let's check that we've got the right answer by adding it back so we've got 100 plus 50 plus 20 gives us 170 and the 8 plus the 2 adds up to 10 so we've got 170 plus 10 equals 180 so that must be correct